So today I'm going to be doing a quick look at a 1911 in 9mm, a compact 1911 in 9mm, and a Glock 19, and giving you guys some ideas and maybe some reasoning on why it might be a good option to have a 1911, a compact 1911 at 9mm in the collection, and how it stacks up against a Glock. So the first part is, it's not a Glock, and I think that's the biggest distinction to make because, honestly, between these two, even though they're both 9mm compact handguns in, honestly, a very similar size range, they are very much two birds of a different feather. You have something that is a hammer-fired, full metal-framed handgun versus a striker-fired polymer-frame handgun, and the impulse and the whole shootability of these two firearms is completely different. So a lot of you would probably ask, why in the world would you ever go to a 1911? It has lower capacity, it's heavier, and it doesn't really offer anything new. It's not a, it's a very old design, you know, it's been around over 100 years. You know, what's the point of even getting into it, especially if it's a 9 mil, you know, why not just go with the Glock 19? And there are a few reasons in my opinion. The first is the single stack kind of essence of a 1911. This 1911 over here, especially because they're both 9 mil, is noticeably thinner and mo noticeably easier to actually conceal when it comes time. It's always easier to slide a piece of paper down your pants than it is to shove a brick down your pants. So that kind of helps sum it up a little bit. And honestly, the 1911, what I love so much about its size, for me personally, it's right there in that sweet spot where it's noticeably thinner than a double stack magazine handgun but yet it's not so thin that it feels like a piece of paper when you're trying to hold it and shoot it this allows you to be you know a little bit at more accurate and a little bit more fast than holding something super thin like a glock 43 so what are other advantages of it honestly this is one that i would have never really thought about unless i had shot them side by side and i've done a lot of shooting the Glock 19, the 1911, and my P10C side by side or one after the other. And that is the sheer controllability of the handgun. And what I mean by this is when you put a 9mm in a full metal frame like this, it absolutely pacifies the recoil and makes the gun so much more tame and much easier and much faster to get back on target. And it's something that's really hard to just describe to you guys, but it is very noticeable whenever you shoot a 1911 as opposed to something like a polymer framed uh, Glock 19 or P10C. The gun just feels like it doesn't even move when you shoot it. And that is a really nice feature for not just carry, but also for practicing because it's so nice to not really have to muscle the gun at all. The gun just doesn't move and it's very flat shooting. So those are a few reasons. The other is the trigger. The trigger is always going to be better in a 1911. Now, some may argue and some may say that, you know, a custom trigger and that I'm comparing a, you know, a stock Glock trigger to, you know, a 1911 trigger. But honestly, if you just look at the actions, there's just simply no way that a 1911 can be beat by a striker fired handgun. It's just not in the design. I mean, the same can even be said about something like the P10C, which does have a great trigger in all honesty. So with the 1911, so it's a sear tripping the hammer when you pull the trigger. So it just doesn't operate the same way because every time with a striker fired handgun, what you're doing is you're pulling that striker back and then right before it breaks is when the striker's released and it sla slams home and hits the round and goes off. So physically, there's two very different actions and that action of priming the striker, letting the striker fall down is something that you just can't make as smooth or as clean as just tripping a sear. So inherently 1911 triggers are much better, especially if you have any custom work done or if you do put an aftermarket trigger, if you do compare apples to apples and you put an aftermarket 1911 and an aftermarket Glock trigger in there, will the Glock be smoother and lighter? Sure, but it still will be nothing in comparison to an aftermarket 1911 trigger. So with that out of the way, 
it's a better shooter and it's a better carrier. However, there are disadvantages, of course. The 1911 is a more picky system, and of course, having an exposed hammer can lead to failure if anything tries to or is able to block that hammer from striking, or even if it just simply slows the hammer down. And I have had that experience happen a few times, not with this particular 1911, but with another Colt 1911 that I was shooting in the cold. I was shooting it for a while, and after a certain point, the oil had just began to slow that hammer down, or the gun oil that was in the uh, gun had just begun to freeze and add enough friction that it was slowing that hammer down just enough that every once in a while it would hit just a little bit too soft to get that round to go. Now the advantage of having exposed hammer is if the round doesn't go bang, you can just cock the hammer back and usually it'll go bang on the second try. So there is kind of a balance to that. However, the fact that it doesn't go bang the first time can, if you're in a serious self-defense situation, be a matter of life and death. So inherently, you do have to be more attentive to the needs of a 1911. And there are more points of failure because there are more moving systems, so to speak. But in all honesty, there are a lot of advantages to 1911s and especially if you're looking at one to carry, they make a great appendix handgun. This is currently what I appendix carry and I really love it. I haven't really looked back at anything like the 19 or my P10C because it fills the need that I need it to and it's honestly a great handgun. Anyways guys, that's all for now. God bless and I'm out.